So, the Space Force has been in the news a lot lately. Space is a warfighting domain, just like the land, air, and sea. Space Force, opinions? The Space Force concept as a separate service is one of those intellectually attractive ideas widely debated that's a thoroughly stupid idea. Um, this is somewhat controversial, a question about whether it's actually needed, what it will be used for, how much it will cost. The logo for the Space Force should just be a picture of money being shredded and thrown at the moon. <laughs> we ride into battle on a Space Horse, of course. But don't we have one already? Isn't that what NASA is? Is this just a public affairs play for the Trump administration? Or do we really need to create a new branch of the military? Well, let's take a look. Everything you've got! Come on, you ape! You wanna live forever? Before visions of spaceships flying around the Earth engaging in laser battles fills your imagination, we need to get into what the reality of a Space Force would look like. I warn you that it's extremely complicated. Former astronauts and political pundits are already drawing lines in the sand. I'm going to try to stay as unbiased as possible in this video. Set your faces on stun, we're going to beam directly into the capital city. Over the millions of years in human existence, we have found very creative ways to harm one another. So, our militaries have evolved to meet that. Let's start with World War I. Then, the United States did not have a Department of Defense, then a Department of War and a Department of the Navy, both reporting directly to the Commander-in-Chief. The two branches existed because each required their own skill set and strategy to go on the offense against the enemy. We did have aircraft at the time under the Department of the Army, but their primary role was for reconnaissance and supporting the troops on the ground. They very rarely had their own offensive missions without ground forces. In World War II, the air war evolved. With the advent of long-range bombers and a wide variety of attack and fighter aircraft, the air solidified itself as its own theater of war. Due to the evolution in technology, the Army Air Corps and their adversaries were able to go on the offensive with their aircraft and have their own missions not involving ground troops. As the war went on, the Army and Navy were both taking on more roles in order to counter the enemy, and those new roles were outside of their original scope. When the war ended, government leadership realized that the military needed an organizational overhaul in order to stay dominant in their respective specialties in this new era of war. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. So, they created the Department of Defense and created new military departments beneath it. In this new Department of Defense, the government took all the staff who served under the Army Air Corps and created the Air Force. So now there was an Army, Navy, and a newly formed Air Force, each with their own specialty to go on the offensive when needed. Since then, the Department of Defense has continued to expand to meet the needs in order to defend the nation. One of those expansions was the creation of Air Force Space Command in 1982, in response to the Cold War. According to the Air Force Space Command, their mission is to provide resilient and affordable space capabilities for the Air Force, Joint Force, and the nation. The Air Force Space Command has several important roles. They employ over 30,000 people, manage two very busy spaceports, maintain the nuclear intercontinental ballistic missile system and missile warning systems, defend the Air Force Information Network, oversee the launch and maintenance of surveillance and reconnaissance satellites, and manage the military's anti-satellite systems, basically shooting enemy satellites out of the sky, which has never happened, as far as we know. These are a lot of capabilities to have been developed under the wing of the Air Force, which is completely separate from the mission of NASA, although they do share some resources and facilities. Um, Donald owns this restaurant. Oh. Uh, this is my friend Mike McNeil. Hey, listen, are you bagging her? Huh? Are you? No, no. So, after learning all this, what would creating a Space Force do different than what we already have? There are several good reasons arguing for and against. The largest reason for creating the Space Force is to consolidate the resources of space militarization into one branch. Similar to what happened in 1947 with the creation of the Air Force, outside the Air Force Space Command, there are teams within the Army, Navy, and NASA that also contribute towards national security efforts in space. A new branch would put them all under one roof and create a culture and centralized vision for space defense. This would likely include new things such as a Space Force Academy, Space Force boot camps, distinct uniforms, and its personnel makeup would likely be made up of people with engineering and IT backgrounds, rather than what you see in your typical military branch, as their battlefield would be cyber warfare and between spacefaring robots. 
With consolidation, the Trump administration is hoping that this would ramp up developments in space defense. We already have laser satellite tracking, anti-satellite missiles, and the highly classified X-37B. Keeping up with our largest adversaries in China and Russia is a full-time job for the Department of Defense. If our adversaries create a technology we have, we need to be one step ahead and have one they do not have. And there are many ways of doing that, but at what cost? And the cost is the main concern that people have when they hear of the creation of a new branch in the Space Force. Conservatively, it'll be in the billions of dollars and likely take up to a decade to put into effect, only creating more debt and pulling resources from other government programs. Donald Trump has said that he wants American dominance in space. According to a report from the Union of Concerned Scientists, 802 out of 1,732 satellites launched from the Earth are United States-based. That's 46%. Essentially, every other satellite in space is American-made, so we are clearly dominant in that front. We also have sent more Americans into space than any other country in the world, by far. 339 to the rest of the world's 214. So the only argument for the dominance seems to be around the more offensive weapons and technology. You don't need that private, we're right here, now what is it? But if we're talking about going on the offensive, we need to talk about the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which represents the basic legal framework of international space law. This treaty is made up of 107 nations, including the United States, and it explicitly bars countries that participate in the treaty to place weapons of mass destruction in Earth orbit, installing them on the moon or any other celestial body. So this only limits nuclear, radiological, chemical, and biological weapons. Your run-of-the-mill explosives, bullets, and other kinds of missiles can be parked in orbit for an attack of your choosing. So the treaty does not really affect an argument for either side. In reality, much like other things, this whole decision comes back to politics. Before anything can happen, Congress needs to pass a bill that not only creates a space force, but funds it. To give you an idea, it took five years and several revisions for Congress to pass a bill that would eventually create the Special Operations Command, better known as SOCOM. And that bill was just to unify Special Operations Forces across the three branches into working better together, not creating a whole new branch. Anyways, I think you get the picture. There's still a lot yet to be seen, but what it comes down to is how much are we willing to spend on the Department of Defense, which currently sits at $686 billion for 2019, which is the equivalent of 37 NASAs. We definitely get a bigger government, but will we get a better space defense? I guess we'll find out soon enough. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna learn more. Uh, I do wanna acknowledge that I did not cover every single little detail about the Space Force in this video. There's just so much to cover and I really just wanted to help everybody get more informed about the issue. I hope you learned something and I'll talk to you later. All right, bye.